I had another gadget in the works at the time, which was a 30-foot pole that hang, hung beneath a helicopter and had a, an area on the bottom of it. It had the first video assist, very clumsy video assist thing that uh, Jerry Lewis dreamed up, actually, in New York, so that my cameraman could sit up in the seat of the helicopter and rotate this pole, and we made a mechanism so he could tilt the camera at the bottom and I could fly the pole right alongside cars in a car commercial, right, in the desert in California. And it was in a big foam ball, so we actually flew it and let it just skid right along the ground and look up at the undercarriage of these cars and then swirl around them and then fly off, you know. So a terrestrial shot turned into a, a flying shot, right? And they were Subarus. That was the first time that they had imported the Subaru, which were a bit tinny and cheesy at the time. Well, we went and looked at this footage, and it was astonishingly stable in two axes. The footage, because the thing was on a pole, was, you know, it didn't vibrate in this axis, and it didn't vibrate in this axis. And I had put a couple of weights up there, because I'd learned from an early experiment that if you had a little inertia there, then it would stabilize it then. So it was stable in all three axes. And that set me thinking about, you know, could you make a pole that you could handhold? Could you stick a camera on it and hold it in balance and put some weights on a T-bar? Could you make it stable? You know? And I got very excited by that in a visit to my father-in-law's farm upstate. And so I conned him into taking me to the great hardware store in Tunkhannock, PA. And his friend in the plumbing department made me a pole for $4.50 with a T-bar and two plumbing weights on it. And I bolted my little Akai video camera to the front of it, you know, with a Akai recorder at the time. It was the first portable video recorder. It was a quarter-inch reel-to-reel recorder, black and white, which I still own. And uh, we ran all over his farm, you know, and was terribly excited to look at this stuff because, you know, here are moving shots that look like you're in a dolly. Um, the fact that the pole whipped a little bit and the fact that if you tilt up, the lens goes up and down was an irritation. But I'd have to ask you to imagine the level of excitement and being, you know, maybe the first guy to walk like that, you know, or run with a camera and have it look like it's on rails. You know, it rolled some, you know, who cared, you know. And that got me really, uh, that kind of set me off because I started using it on commercials. I took that tape to New York and tried to persuade car people like Ford, you know, J. Walter Thompson to let me do car commercials because I did it car to car with the lens just caressing the nose of a car and looking down at the wheel well and up into the window and, you know, all this stuff, right? Stuff that they're actually kind of doing now in car commercials but was inconceivable to the Ford guys. Um, you know, they looked at my helicopter rig, they looked at the Subarus and thought those were just cheap shit, foreign tin, and, you know, anything to do with them was terrible. And we never got uh, a job doing a car commercial. But I actually started doing terrestrial jobs, lugging my camera, film camera, and the pole. Now, one problem was with a film camera, you can't see through the damn lens. So, uh, I put the video camera alongside and, you know, de-parallax it and try and use that or uh, really was kind of in trouble for a way to viewfind. And I had a call from John, um, I'll think of his name. He produced American Sportsman and directed American Sportsman and he had a, a shoot to do, shooting the jockey Robin Smith walking from her dressing room all the way out to the rink where they inspect the horses as, as she had gotten in her colors and was ready to race. A female jockey, very famous. And uh, he had heard from the head of a, a uh, rental house in New York that I had this gadget. And he called up and said, you know, it's 16 millimeter, can you do it? And I said, oh yeah, sure, no problem. And we had two weeks to try and get some kind of viewfinding. And prior to that, I had uh, found a fiber optic viewer at Edmund Scientific 
and I had the idea that maybe, you know, that would be a way that you could look through the lens. You could get that viewer down, you know, flexible viewer down onto the eyepiece and you could, you could see what you were shooting because I was desperate to see what was out there on the pole. And I drove up to uh, Massachusetts and I talked to American Optical who made this little funky plastic viewer. And they offered me a, an astonishing one that was five feet long that had 80,000 fibers. And then the guy brings out a six-footer, even more flexible, with 300,000 fibers. But we couldn't afford it. But I had the, he loaned me the five-footer, right? So we kludged that onto the viewfinder of a camera. And on the day, I was standing in, in the Saratoga racetrack, you know, making a 16-mil shot ahead of this woman, trying desperately to see what the hell's going on with one eye and navigate with the other eye. Um, and my assistant cameraman, very unhelpfully would say to me, no, no, if I'm going the wrong way, you know. And I'm walking through what I can tell her that one of their flower beds, because stuff is dragging at my feet, you know, and I'm lifting <laughs> my feet really high, and she's getting really far away. And then I managed to claw my way back close to her, and then she got in the ring, and I stuck the thing through the slats and walked around the ring. And uh, John Wilcox was his name, said, okay, give us the film, we got to shoot some other stuff. And I'm on the way home, having no idea what we'd done, thinking that I'd screwed it up. Um, quite depressed about it, actually. Uh, I only heard later, way, way later, that uh, his client was Rune Arledge, his producer for that. And Rune loved the shot. And they loved the fact that I got distant from her and came up to her. You know, all the accidental things that had happened, they thought were terrific, right? But the shot was fine, you know. Would have actually improve my morale to know that. But I ended up making prototypes, one after the other, uh, hunting for some practical way to do this. 